sisters in Christ, thank you for your care and concern for Scott. Pray for you as you continue to minister in Christ's name. Blessed be God, Father, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Friends in Christ, we come together to meet with God and to take our part in the building up of his church. We will lift up our hearts in thanks and praise, hear from God's holy word, and pray for this world and for ourselves. Today we're also gathered here to commission the Reverend Scott Wingard as priest in charge of this parish. This ministry continues the good work done through the years in this community, and it's part of the work and witness of the whole church. The Bible tells us to approach God confidently through our Lord Jesus Christ. And as we do so, we must confess our sins, seeking forgiveness through God's boundless goodness and mercy. So let us draw near to God with sincerity and confidence and pray together. God of oh, mercy. We humbly admit that we need your help. We have wandered from your way. We have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and have failed to do what is right. You alone can save us. Have mercy on us. Wipe out our sins and teach us to forgive others. Bring forth in us the fruit of your Spirit, that we may live in new life to your glory. This we ask in the name of Jesus our Saviour. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Grace and peace be with you. And also with you. Let us now pray for wisdom and understanding as we listen to God's word. Heavenly Father, give us wisdom and understanding as we listen to your word. May we know you better, love you more, and learn to please you in all we do. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like to be seated for our first reading. from the book of Numbers. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting, and have them take their place there with you. I will come down and talk with you there, and I will take some of the spirit that is on you, and put it on them. And they shall bear the burden of the people along with you, so that you will not bear it all by yourself. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered seventy elders of the people, and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him, and took some of the spirit that was on him, and put it on the seventy elders. 
e a glória do novo. reading comes from Romans chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is what the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith. Ministry in ministering. The teacher in teaching. The exhorter in exhortation. The giver in generosity. The leader in diligence. The compassionate in cheerfulness. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to your As we prepare to hear the gospel, I invite you to stand as we sing, Lord, your word. No one has greater love than this, 
to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. <coughs> For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, the Lord Jesus Christ. Just who's going to get it first? When? 
will Africa or PNG get vaccinated? Linda Woodhead, an eminent British theologian, once said of the whole thing of Christianity that everybody matters equally apart from one, yourself. You matter a little bit less. It's the exact opposite, really, of what the world says. Hey, everyone's equal, but hey, you matter just a little bit more. But there, in that little phrase, got the seed of the idea of sacrifice. You might say that conceptually sacrifice is the very antithesis of we're all in this together. It's quite simply one person or one thing is not going to be short. But when you open up the book of Romans, you get to see a new way you might see of what is called a living sacrifice and an appeal to not conform to this world. And Paul offers there a vision of how we are to be together, not conforming to this world. A place where we each have our own function and role, but we are so knit together, he calls it one body. In the book of Numbers, we have our first reading. Now, book of Numbers, you get to see something similar, but not really the same. The appointment of 70 elders, and they're there to bear the burden of the people so that Moses doesn't carry it alone. That is a lesson for churches, if I may say. And in the gospel, we get to see, in a sense, and you know this already, what binds all this together. Very simply, love. But a love so ardent and deep that it will lay down one's life for one's friends. This is why we are all in this together. We are bound together. We are together in love. We are together for good. And we are together because someone laid down their life died for us and rose again. If this pandemic has taught us anything, I think it has taught us a lot, we have, I think, culturally got to see just how dangerous isolation can be, how pernicious it can be to the human condition. I guess you can survive 30 days without food and I guess what most of us have learned, you can survive about that length of time on junk food and Netflix, but in the end, you're left desperately alone and craving contact and human touch. This sermon is meandering around, but I want it to be about ministry. For in those readings that we've heard just now, we get a view a vision of how we might be together, where there is true collaboration, and where there are roles for those who are there and no one's left out. Quite simply, it was in three readings a vision of ministry. And if we're honest, in terms of the church, we're just as vulnerable to the forces of the world around us as anyone else. Often, Often, in churches, we speak of how we are in this together. But when the jobs need doing, hands disappear into pockets. And understandably, people look to a young cleric and say, well, you can lift and move the chairs. So I'm going to say something here that I said just the other night in Barden Parish. Take care of your priests. One of the things I want you to ensure, if you can, it is pretty fundamental, is ensure that Scott takes his day off. He has every reason on earth to do so. Sarah and Ezra, of course. 
that he will find every reason not to do so. So help Scott take his day off. But more than that, strive together for that vision of life together that we so often hear in the Bible. A life that knows that we are truly purposed and we are redeemed by the one who showed the greatest love. A love that will truly inspire each one of us. Amen. Scott, do you believe that you are called by God to this new ministry? I do. Do you, Scott, in the presence of this congregation, commit yourself to this new priestly leadership now entrusted to you? I do, the Lord being my helper. Will you take your place in the life and counsels of the church, gladly and willingly following the godly and lawful directions of your bishop? I will by God's grace. Do you, the people of this parish, also commit yourselves to share in God's mission? We do. May the Archbishop's license be read. This is the Anglican Church, Diocese of Brisbane, deed of institution and license of a priest in charge. Philip, by divine providence, Archbishop of Brisbane, to our beloved in Christ, Scott Robert Windred, Dip Ed, Dip B, Bib S, and BTH, greeting. We do hereby admit you to the parish of Sunnybank within our diocesan jurisdiction, and we do hereby duly and canonically institute you in and to the charge thereof as priest in charge you having first made and subscribed the declarations and taken the oaths provided to be made, subscribed and taken, and having first taken the oath of canonical obedience to us and our successors, Archbishops of Brisbane, in all things lawful and honest. And we do hereby give and grant to you in whose fidelity, morals, sound learning and sound doctrine we do fully confide our licence and authority in accordance with and subject to our powers and prerogatives and the constitution and canons of the Anglican Church of Australia and this our diocese. For so long as you shall continue to hold the office of priest in charge of the said parish and to perform the office of priest within our said diocese and jurisdiction, in preaching the word of God and in administering the sacraments and performing all other ecclesiastical duties belonging to the said office according to the rites and ceremonies of the Anglican Church of Australia. And we do hereby reserve to ourselves and to our successors all powers and authorities, dignity and honour appertaining to our spiritual office or vested in us by the said constitution and canons, including the power to revoke the said appointment and the said licence at any time. In witness thereof, we have caused our seal, which we use in this behalf, to be hereto affixed the 18th day of November in the year of our Lord 2020 and in the 23rd year of our consecration. And Archbishop Philip has signed it and it was registered in the Dawson Registry of Brisbane on the day and year within written. Scott, 
God, may God pour grace upon you abundantly and be with you in your worship and work. May you be faithful as is God who calls you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Scott, I commission you as priest in charge of the parish of Sunnybank. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. in a moment. <laughs> yeah, we'll do it again. Scott, receive this charge, which is the Archbishop's and yours, and accept the care and leadership of this parish. May God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in all truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Would you please turn around? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I present to you the Reverend Scott Windred, now commissioned as priest in charge of this parish. presentation of kind of symbols and gifts and the call to mission. Today's service is a celebration of Scott's commissioning for priestly ministry in this parish. It is also an opportunity for all the people of the parish together with Scott to make a fresh commitment to serving God's mission. I invite you to join with Scott in making that commitment now. faithful in reading, studying, and meditating upon the scriptures. Encourage the study of God's word, and be diligent in proclaiming the gospel. I commit myself to this ministry, and give thanks to God's written word, and affirm this ministry. We promise to live to hear and read and study the Holy Scriptures. among your people as a person of prayer, faithfully ordering the worship of the church and administering its pastoral offices. I commit myself to this ministry and give thanks to God for the prayer and worship of all God's people. We really commit ourselves to come to God in prayer and worship. Be faithful in administering holy baptism according to the command of Christ and the order and discipline of this church. I commit myself to this ministry and give thanks to God for the new life he has given us in his son Jesus. We welcome those who are baptized and assist them by our Exercise your ordination commission to reconcile sins. I give thanks to God for the forgiveness I find in his son Jesus, and I will constantly seek his guidance in exercising this ministry. We are in our own need for forgiveness, 
seek grace to be reconciled to God and to one another. Anoint the people of God for healing and strengthening. I give thanks for the healing power of Christ, and I trust in God's strength in exercising this ministry. We will pray for the sick and suffering, and for those who need the healing power of God. Be diligent in celebrating with God's people the Holy Communion of the Body and Blood of Christ. I give thanks to God for the death and resurrection of His Son, Jesus Christ, and will be faithful in this ministry. We will always give praise and thanks to God for the bread of life and the cup of eternal salvation, and be diligent in receiving this holy sacrament. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. God of our salvation, home of all the ends of the earth, we pray your kingdom come. That the world may know Jesus Christ as the Prince of Peace, we pray your kingdom come. That all who are estranged and without hope 
may be brought near in the blood of Christ, we pray. Your kingdom come. That the church may be one in serving and proclaiming the gospel, we pray. Your kingdom come. That we may be bold to speak the word of God while you stretch out your hand to save, we pray. Your kingdom come. That the church may be generous in giving, faithful in serving, bold in proclaiming, we pray. Your kingdom come. That the church may welcome and support all whom God calls to faith, we pray. Your kingdom come. That all who serve the gospel may be kept in safety while your word accomplishes its purpose, we pray. Your kingdom come. That all who suffer for the gospel may know the comfort and glory of Christ, we pray. Your kingdom come. That the day may come when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, we pray. Your kingdom come. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may ever be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves surrounded by their witness to your power and your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sit for speeches. Yes. I'd like to uh, call upon firstly uh, Jennifer uh, to give us a welcome to Scott and Sarah Ezra um, on behalf of the parish. Welcome Scott 
as your pastor at Sunnybank Anglican Church. It's no secret this church has a long, rich heritage. I came here when I was a teenager to do a course for a, 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 a crusade that's going to be held for young people so we could follow them up. It's my prayer that God continues to use this church to expand the kingdom of God. I pastor the Assemblies of God Church, we now call ourselves Australian Christian Church in Rungall. On the other end of the road is the Sunnybank District Baptist Church. It's pastored by my friend, Daryl Evans. I was on the phone with Daryl the other day and he said, Wayne, I drive past your church two to three times every week and every time I do, I stop and pray for your church. I'm on the phone and I go, well, I do the same thing, but I'm a bit lazy. I only drive past your church once or twice a week. But every time I drive past your church, I pray. Well, today, I'd like to make a covenant to you. I don't drive past Mr. Street two three times a week. I do five times a year. My dentist is at the end of the street. <laughs> Kim Marks is in the street. It's five or six times a year I visit him or the dentist. But every time I drive past the street, I covenant to pray for you, for this church, to, you, to continue to expand the kingdom of God. Sunnybank needs this church to thrive because you will reach people that our church will never reach. But we all serve the same master, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For the past couple of weeks, I've not been able to get Psalm 133 out of my head. If you're a church person, the mere fact that you're not watching the football, as I will be shortly, <laughs> it tells me you're committed to the body of Christ. It tells me you know this psalm well. Uh, it, it was originally sung by thousands of people on a pilgrimage as they went up the hill of Jerusalem and there they would partake of the Passover. It was a once a year celebration. They would sing how good it is, how pleasant it is when God's people dwell together in unity. The psalmist goes on and he says, you know that really expensive oil? The one that Moses used to anoint Aaron? Well, unity is more important than that. Companies pay huge amounts of money for consultants to try to bring unity into an organization. As a community of churches, we don't have to do that. We already have unity. Our rallying point is Jesus Christ and to make him known. Reading the psalm, we're told that unity is like Mount Hermon. Mount Hermon is the highest mountain in Israel. People today stop their cars and get out and take a selfie with that in the background because it kind of grabs your attention. Unity grabs attention. And I pray that we have unity, all of the churches, with this church. I'm really looking forward to Christmas this year. Every year, my brother's wife and her husband, they come and spend time with us for about a week and a half with their kids. It's a great time. And it's not so much great because we eat a lot of junk food because they have late new trips at the beach. It's a great time because we get along with each other so well. We do day trips at the beach. We play games at night. There's laughter. No one's walking on eggshells. We feel comfortable with each other. That's what unity does. It's so attractional unity. Show me a church of unity, and I'll show you a church with the potential to grow. Show me a church that has a lack of unity, and I'll show you a church in decline. The psalm concludes by saying, and in this setting with unity, the Lord commands a blessing. You don't have to pray for it. You don't have to demand it. It's like God decrees that you are unified around the person of Jesus Christ. And this church will continue to shine brightly for its glory. So thank you, Scott, for coming. We look forward to being friends. God bless. On behalf of the deanery, Scott, I'd like to welcome you uh, to our deanery. It's a deanery that I have uh, loved for the last 13 years. I don't tell Bishop I've been here that long. Um, but it's, it's a wonderful deanery because it's, we're genuine with each other and open and honest um, and there for each other. I know when I've needed some advice, uh, there's always been a, a listening ear at the other end. Uh, it's great that we have meetings and then often we'll head off uh, for dinner afterwards where we have the after meeting meeting which as you know as a good Anglican that is the important meeting um, so it's great that we can, can have you amongst us and also Sarah and Ezra um, you are just as much part of the area as well and we would love to have you um, partake in any of the things we have it's a, it's a great theory the parish is a great parish to come to uh, we'll be praying for you we didn't know it was you that we're praying for but what we did know it was good to continue to pray for you um, I know firsthand this lovely parish. Um, I was here when I was 18, um, but we don't talk about those days, do we? We should see. All right. Um, I wasn't close with that. Um, but it was great to uh, be here, and I know this parish will uh, look after you and care for you. Um, and I pray that they do. So, 
Welcome to the Deanery, welcome to Sunnybank Parish. It's now your turn to speak, Scott. No pressure. <laughs> Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go the blues. Go <laughs> in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Shall we join together as we sing how great thou art?
long and far Flood out banks Reveal your heart